How's it going, everyone? My name is Brendan. Who am I? I'm just a lifelong musician who has been influenced by just about every type of instrumental music you can imagine. And I'm here to introduce my new YouTube channel, which will be a hub for all of my new ambitious music projects. This will be my first episode in an original series of mine, which aims to combine highlights containing early versions of songs, innovative moments of improvisation, banter, gags, with documentary aspects. This idea came about after I caught my third Walnut Creek show in 2018, and after being an on and off fan for over a decade at that point, I decided it was finally time to dive into the deep, intimidating ocean that was 1.0 fish, aka the 80s and 90s. So I started with the jam charts on fish.net covering the 1980s, and I worked my way up through 1993. After a while, I thought it was necessary to begin compiling the best tracks and the best jams that I heard. And then, this eventually snowballed into me picking out the best moments from those jams and turning them into a video format, as well as add in anything else that was relevant, such as rare pictures, footage of shows, and interview clips. Thus, my quote-unquote highlights in a semi- documentary style format was born. Well, over the course of a few years, I listened to the taping sites, researched all over the internet, and edited videos covering 83 through 87, 88 and 89, 90, 91, 1992, which is a very dense video and probably my favorite project I've made so far, and not to mention I spent two years making it as well as two videos for 93, two for 2018, and a bunch of other years from the 2010s I'm still working on. This has been one of my biggest hobbies, and I am very stoked about the idea of trying to sum up each year using only the highest quality examples. And when I say that, I mean not just settling for clips from the most popular jams, or showing off the highest rated shows and calling it a day. I wanted to dig as deep as I could to find the greatest moments of musicianship these four had to offer. Whether those were famous moments or things unheard of by anyone outside of a few people who frequent fish.in. Now, enough of my rambling. Please enjoy the video. Welcome to Hunts, everybody. I hope you're ready to dance. We're fish. <laughs> We're going to start right out now with a song that you have not heard yet. And this one is a story of the man who lives directly across the street from us right now. <laughs> Harry Hood. And this is the story of Harry and his vacation across the globe to the sunny beaches of Greece. And it all starts as our friend Brian places a carton of good milk into the refrigerator do- at the door and closes the door and as he closes the door and walks away he asks himself a question we went to Europe to play street music we were 19 me and Pete Catoni, my friend, and, and Fish. We didn't s- sleep in a bed for, it was amazing. And then we went to Greece and we were in Corfu and we lived on this beach. And I was re- that was where I wrote Harry Hood during that period on the beach. All the music, everything other than the where did you go with the lights go out bit.
previous owner of the small house was named Mr. Miner, so we used to get all his mail. And he would get these, like, you know, like, publisher's clearing house. Thank you, Mr. Miner. We were always like, thank you, Mr. Miner. answer to sign bass player needed um, and I went to our I brought these two oversized bass amps into a tiny little dorm lounge and we jammed for 45 minutes or so and there were a lot of people in there sort of hanging out and it was already kind of a scene at the first the first time three sets and he'd say you know play Mustang Sally or play a slow one and then at seven it would kind of switch to like bar scene and then for the late night set all our friends would be there and it would turn into this crazy Iculus game hinge people screaming and all this stuff
Why do I try Why do you do it? Why do I do it? Why do you do it, Mike? Because you're a I was really a guitar, I was really a closet guitar player. I would air guitar to Hendrix and to Led Zeppelin. I'd play the guitar parts in my room. I'd stand in front of my stereo with my headphones on and just like, you know. I can probably still sing like all of Rat Tamago from Zappa's, you know, Chic or Booty album. And I would go downstairs, my drums, my stereo was in my room, and my, I would go downstairs, have some sort of, you know, imaginary version of that thing going through my head. and I. I was like in that space playing that music and uh, so I did that for like 10 years of my life in my parents' basement and then I went to college and I met Trey like within two months and Mike and we just started a band and that's it. It, is, it was kind of like, I felt like it was kind of like love at first sight. <laughs> it was like post-orientation or something and there's a library and I saw this guy walk by. <laughs> this guy goes by with like a, he's like, like tie-dye down to his like knees this oversized and big, huge hair, and these ill-fitting Coke bottle glasses, and this ridiculous look on his face. And I was just like, who is that, oh my God, who is that guy? Here's my dorm from when I was a freshman. Right there, there's Fish's room. He was a few halls down from me, he was a freshman, and he had his drum set in his room. And I went over and jammed with him, I had my amp, and we started jamming right away. And that was like 35 years ago.
into a pile of yesterday. I've alternated my meager flock to the shores of the Baltic Sea. The teeth of time have stowed the rhyme of how things should be. My cave, my house, my turning wheel, my little docking pup. The march of Colonel Forbin and his fleet hound called McGruff. All times and seasons are the reasons people and their clans have stowed the famous mockingbird with glue and rubber bands. The grime of countless work dogs has collected in my sink. I tie my nose with spandex hose before I get a drink. We lie on frozen warthogs with its poison in our minds. While the ferns that spot our children are encased in orange rhymes, they writhe and cry in agony as Rutherford, the brave, chokes Tila and the unit monster, thus managing to save the spotted stripers, multi beast, and thereby cheat his grave. I'd like to get his autograph. <laughs> But he looks too much like Dave, ladies and gentlemen, Dave. He's with us very much a party band. There's a ridiculous video online from 1980s. Mike and I with very long hair playing at this place called The Ranch. Where all our friends would come and we would play outside. You know, we had a party. We played at this pig roast and it was so fun. And all our friends were there. And there's kind of a tape that floats around at the pig roast. and There's 8,000 dogs barking and all this stuff. It was always that with fish. We were a party band and we tried to take care of our friends.
We want everybody to be comfortable. And we always had a gang of friends from the beginning. Always. I'm talking about from the first gig. When we were in Italy, I was writing all those, I had a little mini guitar and I was writing like the little You Enjoy Myself and all the bits. And there was this guy we were hanging out with. He was Italian, he barely spoke English at all. Like me and Fish and this guy, right near the Uffizi Museum. And he had his arm, one arm around me and one around Fish and he said, you know, when I am with you, you enjoy myself. And that was the name of the song. And I remember walking in that door with all the sheet music that was You Enjoy Myself. And Jeff, my first guitar player, would just be like, what is this? I'm not doing this. And Paige being like, I'll do it. Yeah, let's do it.
Yeah. <laughs> the car is a thing 